Today, Gary Cassie shares the Open for Business Provision Conference. Tonight, I want to talk about having a supernatural business, a business that causes astonishment. I believe God wants to raise you up to cause astonishment, not to survive, but to cause astonishment. More from the Open for Business Provision Conference today on Fixing the Money Thing. I want to try to inspire people. They refuse to be inspired. They're so set that it's not possible. See, you'll never be able to do anything you believe is impossible. That is the key. I've got to inspire you to listen to God, Holy Spirit. You've got to, I want you to come out of here with a whole new picture. Hey, Gary Cassie here, and we're at Provision Conference, and I just finished the last session on, on the, this, uh, what today is it, Friday night? Friday night, yeah. And uh, was, man, the power of God is awesome here. The anointing is so strong. Uh, and you yeah. unpack some really important principles of mm. partnership and how, uh, you know, Peter, James, and John, it, you, you, yeah. you want to make sure you get all of it. Peter, James, and John, only one of them really stepped out in, in faith. The others were blessed yeah, because were. of their partnership. Yeah. And that's a powerful it's principle. Powerful. We talked so, about having an astonishing life yeah about how the kingdom makes your life astonishing and and it shares out to people the the, the the life of god it draws them in like light draws in flies right god has set us up and isaiah says as a splendor god wants to show off himself through us and that's what we were teaching tonight yeah. and i tell you it was powerful it draws people in really yeah. powerful so you'll make sure you get every one of these and i know things are just they're yeah. not winding down here no, right we're, we're just getting started up. so here it is friday night at provision so every session has just been amazing and powerful so you don't want to miss any of them you want to go back and review that and get so, those yeah. get those sessions yeah. but uh, the astonishing life that god has for you and who you're linking up with matters to do that and so really powerful stuff wow. yes uh, tim why don't we just take them there right now and let them enjoy the, the evening like we did. Let's do it. And let them see it. All right, this message is life changing, so get ready to take some notes, pay attention. Here we go. Awesome. Title tonight is Anyone Can Catch Fish If Jesus Tells You How. We're gonna talk about business. Everyone's in business. You say, I'm not in business, you are. Everyone's in business, everyone. Running a household's a business. Everyone's in business. Everything happens through business. I want to start in Luke chapter 5. Very, very familiar story. Let's get our Bibles out, or however you read the Bible. Luke chapter 5, let's just start at verse number 1. One day as Jesus was standing by the lake of Gennesaret with the people crowding around him and listening to the word of God, he saw at the water's edge two boats left there by the fishermen who were washing their nets. Pay attention to that. That's important. We'll come back to that. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Peter, and asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down taught the people from the boat. When he finished speaking, he said to Simon, or Peter, put out into the deep water and let down the nets for a catch. And Peter answered, Master, we've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I'll let down the nets. When they'd done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break. So they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' feet, or his knees, and said, Go away from me, Lord. I am a sinful man. For he and all of his companions were what? I want you to remember that at the catch of fish they had taken, and so were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you'll catch men. Now, tonight I want to talk about having a supernatural business, a business that causes astonishment, right? Now, Peter, James, and John already had a business, did they not? They're already out there fishing, didn't catch anything. They already have a business. But there is a big difference of having a business and having the business that God gives you that produces astonishment. I believe God wants to raise you up to cause astonishment, not to survive, but to cause astonishment. I really believe that. So tonight, we're going to talk about operating at the astonishment level in business. 
a supernatural business. Now, you all know my story, basically flunked out of high school on purpose. <laughs> I don't know how many days I was actually there. I don't know. I remember fishing quite a bit. You know, they'd hand the test to me. I just gave it back. I had an attitude problem. Yes, I did. But uh, they'd hand it to me. I just said, I want to take it. They said, well, it'll be zero. I said, I don't care. I may know that if you're a betting person, that person that I'm talking about would have a great chance of success in life, right? <laughs> oh, no. God had too much invested in me to let me do that. He's going to put you through the training program, right? He's going to get you, he's going to get you in the end. But, you know, I think um, I about flunked out of high school, of course, but then God changed our direction, changed our lives, and we launched TV and changed things, got out of debt, and one day, this guy I went to high school with comes into my office. Now, I wasn't there. My secretary is there and said, I am in here because I have no understanding. This is crazy. I went to school with Gary. He's a loser. <laughs> how, how in the world does he have a program on TV called Fixing the Money Thing? I mean, I, uh, the guy actually came into my office and asked my secretary that. <laughs> I like that, don't you? That's astonishment. Now, I write all my own books, and I have had some people help on some of them, but basically I write them all. And uh, so when I wrote my first couple books, uh, my professor from college emailed me. Now, if you remember right, I've told you before, as a freshman in college, I uh, wrote a paper, and he sent it back with a big red F on the front of it, and it said in red ink, is it possible you even went to high school? <laughs> he emailed me. And here is what he said, is it possible that you are the same Gary Cassie that I had in my class that had to be tutored, couldn't write his name to save his life? <laughs> yes, I am. You see, people, you know, <laughs> yeah, people are watching, relatives, relatives and relatives. <laughs> yeah, that's how my dad got saved. Yeah, he watches on TV. Came in here one day, says, I just, too much, I, can, I can't even explain it. Can't explain, too much has happened. Yeah, they're all watching. They're all watching, amen. Now, we're talking about a supernatural business, right? So, uh, be an astonishment. 1 Corinthians 1.27 says, God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God has chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. God loves to take the underdog and show his strength through that person. He loves it. I mean, we all like to root for the underdogs, right? I mean, but God loves to do that because it's his glory. And now, you know, you say, well, why would God call me to do that? Just because you asked that. You don't think you can because he knows he can. And he loves to be seen in that situation. Amen. That's awesome. So first of all, let's understand this. We're going to dive into I'm a spiritual scientist. You're a spiritual scientist. We understand that there are principles we can learn and laws that we can. In other words, we should be able to do that. I mean, one day they're nothing, right? Nothing. They're failed. Nothing. No bills paid. Catch nothing. And then within a day, they have two boats packed to sinking. If that doesn't catch your attention, you must just be, I don't know. But if you understand the kingdom's based on laws, and it's not because Jesus was there, but because Jesus was tapping into the laws, then you might get your pencil out, which is what happened. So let's, let's digest this, this uh, let's digest this event because we all can live in this area. We, should, we can live here. The difference of the, no, you know, the earth curse system is trying and two boats sinking. So what's the effect? They left it and followed Jesus. How many people would follow Jesus if they saw those kinds of effects in your life? What about the fish market? Can you imagine them going down to the fish market? <laughs> I don't know how many wagons or however they transport fish off the boat. Can you imagine? Bring them this way, guys. There's a whole line down that road of people with carts bringing those fish down there. And they're talking to Peter about how that happened. Yep, that's how it is. All right, so write this down. 
first off, we're going to dig into spiritual law. First off, that would have never happened unless Peter got Jesus into that boat. Right? We'd all agree there, right? Jesus is the one that told Peter where the fish were, how to catch them. And I'm going to add something to catch the fish, the harvest. We'll talk about that. Location, method, and harvest. I said it that way because that's kind of what it looks like in the story, but it's actually in reverse. We'll get that straightened out later. So how did Jesus get into that boat? Right? Well, Peter gave him the keys. You ever given the keys to someone and let them drive? So Peter gave Jesus the keys or the authority to drive his boat. Right? The boat came under Jesus' jurisdiction, his authority. Jesus was driving, in a sense. And we all know, we've taught this many times, the boat came under, the boat changed jurisdiction, correct? Came under the kingdom of God, came under Jesus' assignment. So Jesus is now directing the fishing. He's now directing where the boat goes. He is, he's taken over the boat. So how did he get in the boat? How do you get Jesus in your business, all right, where he's directing it because he knows where the fish are at. He knows what to do to, to capture what you need to capture. How do you get him in the boat? It's easy. Make him a partner. Make him a partner. Well, what does that mean, make him a partner? All right, let's examine this. This should be one-on-one for most of you. Philippians 4, 3, Paul is in ministry. Ministry is a business. It takes money, it's a business. I said if it takes money, it's a business. All right. Philippians 4, 3, I thank my God every time I remember you and all my prayers for all of you. I always pray with joy because of your partnership in the gospel. From the first day until now, being confident of this, that he who begun a good work in you will carry it on to completion until the day of Christ. It is right for me to think this about you, since I have you in my heart, and whether I'm in chains or defending and confirming the gospel, all of you share in God's grace with me. Now, Paul has been called into the ministry, and there is anything God calls you to, there's an anointing to do it. So what Paul is saying, I stand in a grace, an anointing to accomplish my task. Now, if you come along beside me and help me with that task, you tap into that same grace or that same anointing. Right? Now, Paul concludes this, this church of Philippi in the fourth chapter, verse 14. Yet it was, now he just received a gift it was good of you to share in my troubles, he says to this church of Philippi. Moreover, as you Philippines know, in the early days of your acquaintance with the gospel, when I set out from Macedonia, not one church shared with me in the matter, or I could say, or you could say the law of giving and receiving. No one participated in the law of giving and receiving, except you. For even when I was in Thessalonica, you sent me aid more than once when I was in need. Not that I desire your gifts. What I desire is that more be credited to your account. we got to talk about that. What does that word more mean in the Greek? Because most people think that when you get to heaven, you get rewards, right? And you will get rewards, but you have an account. I'll prove it to you. Given it shall be given to you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over will be poured into your lap. For with the measure you give, it will be given back to you. Paul says, remember this, whoever sows sparingly will reap sparingly. Generously reaps generously. You have an account. Their angels are keeping records. You can put a demand on that account. That word in the Greek, more, literally means advantage, meaning that I want more added to your account. What is more? More advantage. More profit, that's what it says. That's the Greek word means profit or effect or the result of work or an act or deed you've done like fruit on a tree. That's what the word means. So Paul is saying, man, I'm excited about you having more added to your account, having more favor, 
having more profit, having more influence, having more effect, and helping me with more ministry. Right? Credited to your account. I have received full payment and have more than enough. I am amply supplied. Now that I've received from Ephroditus the gifts you sent, they're a fragrant offering and acceptable sacrifice pleasing to God. And my God, and I've said this many, many times, not your God, don't remember what I taught you in the past, my God, my assignment, my God, will meet all your needs according to the riches of, of his glory in Christ Jesus. Now we read that so quickly. He is saying, my faith is now towards you. My faith, my God. But we get tied up with this word needs because we think of need, we think of survival. We need to examine what's actually being said here. And my God will meet all your needs, which means demand on occasion, requirement of necessity, need, use, or want. My God will meet anything that you have need of according to what? Now, this is the part you got to catch. According to what? According to what? His riches. How does he define that? <laughs> Don't think about that. He's given you a blank check. He said, according to his riches. You're the one that defines what you have need of or necessity or you want or According to his riches, now you can think in his perspective, that could, that's pretty generous, man, from his perspective. He's not thinking survival. He's thinking, hey, you got the whole kingdom, man. What do you want? Demand on occasion, requirement, necessity, need, use, or want. According to his riches. Now, I call this the law of partnership. I've taught it many times. As we know, partners share in the profit, correct? And the expense. When you partner with a God assignment in the earth realm, you tap into that grace on that assignment. Matthew 10, 41, whoever welcomes a prophet as a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. Meaning that if you receive a prophet, it doesn't mean shake hands with him. It means you help supply the need he has to accomplish his task. You recognize he's a prophet. He's on assignment and you understand that. You recognize him as a prophet. You're going to support him as a prophet. You are now partaking as partnership with his assignment and you're going to receive exactly the same reward he has. Whoever welcomes a righteous person as a righteous person, you recognize they're on assignment will receive a righteous person's reward. You'll receive exactly the same. You tap into the same grace on that assignment that causes that boat to fill up and your boat to fill up. Luke chapter 5, we know that the boats were on the shore. I said, note that, right? They're on the shore. Only Peter's boat went out. James and John are on the shore. Peter's boat's sinking with fish. James and John comes out. Their boat is now sinking with fish. And I've asked and told you many times, how much faith did they exercise? None. But they're partners. Peter's the one, because you said so, I will do it. Now, when Peter said that, that's when the grace hit the boat. Because he had to come in agreement with what Jesus wanted to do. I will do that. That's when the grace said. So when they signaled to come out and help them pull the fish in, they were coming out to help. They didn't hear Jesus' command at all. Meaning that when you come alongside to help, you don't have to have heard Jesus speak to you like the person you're following did. Many times the Holy Spirit will bear witness with you, this is God, this is his assignment, you'll feel drawn to it. But you don't have to be the one that says, because I heard the word Jesus, I'm going to, no. You see, you tap in, see, Peter tapped into the anointing, Jesus' anointing right there, the grace on his assignment. James and John tapped into Peter's grace, the grace that Peter brought in there. See, all they're doing is coming along and help. No faith, just, see, people come along and help they don't have to have an angel visit them. They don't have to have some supernatural big revelation. They just want to come along and help. Guess what? They get the same thing. 
the same thing. Now, Paul, and we're talking about the supernatural business, so part, partnering is, is part of that as a business. Now, you don't tithe out of your business. You tithe out of what you take out of your business and spend. But you sow out of your business for increase. You sow out of it. It's not legally a tithe. You could call it that, but it's not li- really a tithe. A tithe is what you pay taxes on. It's what you spend, what you personally use. Your business You know, that's a business. It's its own separate entity, probably. S Corp, LLC, right? If you take money out of it, then you pay taxes on it, right? Then Then you tithe on that. But the business, you sow out of. Not any clapping going on or anything, but. Listen, I'm just talking about getting Jesus in the boat with you, man. You're not even clapping about it. I'm saying you gotta you gotta sow out of your business into into the assignments God leads you to, to tap into that anointing. Get your business involved with the things of God, man. So into the kingdom out of your business and God, Jesus is in your boat. All right. That's the first thing we saw in that story. Paul said, you can receive words of knowledge. First Corinthians 14, Jesus told them where the fish were and he'll tell you as well. In fact, it's one of the gifts of the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit for the church. Words of knowledge, things you didn't know. You'll say, how do I tap into that, Pastor? 1 Corinthians 14. If you pray in a tongue, pray in a tongue. Uh, Second verse, 14. For anyone who speaks in a tongue does not speak to people but to God. Indeed, no one understands them. They utter mysteries by the Spirit. But the one who prophesies speaks to people for their strengthening, encouragement, comfort, Anyone who speaks in a tongue edifies themselves. Edify means bring instruction, revelation. God gave us this secret language, so to speak, secret from the devil, that God can download mysteries under the devil's nose. He doesn't know what's going on. All right, so edification. You need that in business, right? The location over there in the deep water, the method, the net, the harvest, the fish. Now I said it was backwards. We need to reverse this because you can't do it that direction. You have to go backwards. Hang with me. Let's understand what I said last night. The harvest is not money. It is what you're going to monetize into money. In the earth, in the earth, all money is created by buying and selling. You've got to have something that affects commerce somehow to, to create wealth. And so you don't want to, you, you're not looking for money. You're looking for what produces money. That's what you're praying for, an idea. <laughs>